Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 3, aka Armageddon Part 3. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this video is coming out a bit later than usual, I apologise for that. It was very late last night and I kind of fell asleep before the flash came on. So I apologise for this late upload, however next week we will be back on track and I will release my review right after the episode airs, as usual. But for now, let's go ahead and get into today's review. So, this episode was crazy. I got major chills quite a few times in this episode, but especially at the ending. What goes down was just insane, and you guys are going to have to stick with me throughout this whole video as we get to that. I don't think this video is going to be that long because I'm going to try and get to the main points bit by bit and not really go over all the small details. Obviously, smaller details I will be going over in my live stream tomorrow, so please be sure to come and join me. That is Thursday at about... 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But for now, let's go ahead and get into this. So the episode starts with Black Lightning and The Flash as last episode ended. And remember the final line that Barry says after Jefferson says, Barry, what the hell is going on? He just says, Injustice. And now we theorized after that episode ended that Injustice was a protocol that they set. And it turns out that is entirely true. Injustice is a code word, meaning that if one of them goes rogue, they have to take them down to protect the world. So by one of them, I mean one of the Justice League members. So that being Kara, Jean, Barry, Jefferson, Sarah, anyone who is a part of this Justice League. If someone enacts the Injustice Protocol, everyone has to do their best to stop one of the heroes who have gone rogue. And in this case, obviously, it's Barry. And Barry doesn't trust himself because of what went down in the previous episode where he attacked the citizens of Central City. He attacked his friends and he's been having these blackouts. And so Barry wants to get his powers taken away. That is why he's gone to Jefferson. It's not only for advice, although he does get advice. His main reasoning is so that he can be stopped from being a threat. And at this point, Jefferson is like, we need to call the others. We need Kara, we need John, we need Sarah, because after everything that went down with Faust, which he completely drops out of nowhere, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, they basically need all of the team in order to stop Barry if injustice is true. So again, it's very nice to get these references to Kara and Jean specifically who are not in the Arrowverse anymore because of Supergirl ending. So it's nice that we've had two episodes in a row where we've had references to them. And obviously Sarah is still on Legends, so she can definitely be called in. Let's talk about Faust. So the Faust that he references is none other than Felix Faust. We've seen Felix Faust in the Arrowverse before. We've seen him on Constantine if you ever watch season one. We saw him, or at least a version of him, again that doesn't have to be the Arrowverse version, but it seems that between seasons the Justice League have teamed up and they did go on missions that weren't shown on screen and for instance they took down Felix Faust who is a wizard and a magician. So it's a really nice little reference for us DC Comics fans who know Felix Faust and I think he's actually a really good character. It's a shame that we never got to see that battle but again it's nice to know that they haven't just teamed up once and that was it. And that's the end of the Justice League, because remember, half the Justice League aren't in the Arrowverse right now. Obviously, they still are a part of the team in the actual Arrowverse, but for us, we know that, like, Melissa and David aren't going to be in any of the episodes anytime soon. But despite Jefferson's worries, he goes ahead with this because he keeps his promise and he keeps his word. And he has this great saying that he teaches his pupils, and he makes Barry say it towards the end of the episode. Jefferson asks, where's the future? Barry says, right here. Jefferson says, whose life is this? Barry says, mine. And Jefferson says, so what are you going to do with it? And Barry says, live it by any means necessary. And I thought this was such a great moment. And I love the chemistry between Barry and Jefferson and the respective actors, obviously Grant Gustin and Cress Williams. I think they do an excellent job. And I just thought that was one great little moment between these two characters and it brings in Jefferson's teacher side which adds a lot to this moment as he's not just Black Lightning he brings in his personal side he brings in Jefferson and he takes him with him everywhere he goes okay let's move on from here we have this big showdown between Iris and Cecile Cecile is completely mad at Iris after Iris suspects that Despero is up to something and that something greater is going on 
Iris thinks that Barry is being framed and Joe's death was an accident. And at this point, we're like, hmm, who could have changed the timeline? Who could have altered things? Well, none other than Thorn, right? Well, we'll get to that towards the end of the video because there is a huge reveal that I know you guys are dying for me to talk about, but you're just going to have to wait a tiny bit longer. But anyway, so Iris shows everyone a video, including us, obviously, and we see that there is one or two frames missing from the video, and it seems like Joe just popped out of existence, and maybe he'd been taken by someone else when he hit the train track. So, yes, it was revealed that Joe didn't die naturally. He died of a train hitting him. Now this is obviously pretty devastating and it's shown with Cecile's reaction, however Cecile's reaction is extremely warranted considering her personal connection, but I thought it was very bad that she didn't take into consideration that Iris is Joe's daughter. So exactly at the point where Iris says I was his daughter, I was like yes, thank you. Like, she has as much reason to be as devastated as Cecile. And I get that Cecile is mourning, and obviously she's mourning in a different way to Iris, but I thought it was kind of not very respectful to Iris, considering that she lost her dad as well. So let's move on from this. So we have the two different sides of Team Flash going down a different path. Obviously Iris and Allegra are going down the investigative way because Iris has suspicions. However, Cecile is working with Chester and also Caitlin with how to use her mind in order to track down Barry and find him before Despero. And so that's where she goes and she meets Top and she recruits her for some help. And obviously the Top isn't like one of the best characters. She's extremely cliched, I would say, and she is always dropping puns and she has this kind of weirdly snarky attitude that, I don't know, I just don't really like her that much, I guess. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think of the top? Let me know in the comments down below. But they're finding a way to boost Cecile's powers. And she thinks that combining Cecile's powers with the top, they're going to be able to use it to find Barry. So then we go back to Barry and Jefferson. And Jefferson is like, Joe would be proud of you. And they have a little talk before they face off against each other. Now, this isn't an actual fight as of right now. But Barry is struck by Jefferson's lightning as they try and take away his powers and obviously it kind of works but it doesn't fully work because Barry still has the powers inside of him and this is mainly because he's been leveled up so much that he has so much speed force energy with inside of himself that it's incredibly hard to get all of it out. So Iris and Allegra realize that someone was pulling the strings and then suddenly when they go to the train station, Iris kind of gets into a bit of denial but this is only momentarily until she sees on a piece of paper that she's holding some particles flying into the air and now these are no normal particles because no one else can see them and so Iris decides that they have to head back to the train station and so this is a point where we get Despero who taps into Cecile's mind and basically they make that connection and then the top is attacked by Despero and she's nearly killed Obviously, this was a big moment, however, she is alive by the end of the episode, and I have to say, I do think Cecile is overacting a lot in this episode. I get that she is extremely full of grief, but, you know, the constant, like, overacting, I think maybe is a bit too much for what she was going through. That's just a personal nitpick, it's not really a big thing, but... You know, that was just one of the notes I wrote down when watching the episode, because everything else is pretty believable. And so as Iris goes back into the train station, time stops, and you're like, what's happening? And then suddenly, Dion appears, so he's obviously using the still force with inside of himself, and he's tracked Iris down, and Iris wanted him to track her down, because she has a theory. Which is all unraveled and revealed, as Iris asks Dion to undo her treatments, do with her time sickness, and so everything is revealed and you have these temporal isotopes which have been decayed. And this isn't by any normal person. Dion reveals that someone has tapped into the negative still force and that is the particles that Iris has been seeing. And so who the hell did this? Well, again, we think, hmm, who can do this? 
but we've never seen someone tap into the negative still force. So it's someone who's obviously found some extra powers and a way to tap into it, unlike no one before them. So Dion says, Joe wasn't supposed to die and someone has altered the timeline and altered events, so it plays out this way. And at the end of the day, Iris, using her journalistic instincts, is the one who's going to figure out everything, which I think is a very nice touch. And I really, really like what they're doing with Iris right now since we started this new season. And so suddenly out of nowhere, the particles accelerator is turned on and it turns out it's Despero who is absorbing all of the power. So it's pretty likely that he's kind of orchestrated at least that part of what's going on because he needs that power to become basically infinitely powerful. But as Despero taps into Cecile's mind, as I mentioned earlier, Despero is bested by Cecile who is able to use some sort of mind control heat vision. That's how I would describe it. And then we jump back over to Barry. So we have like these three separate storylines that is happening continuously throughout this episode. And I really liked how it's structured because it always got you interested about each of these stories. Yes, the seal story was a bit less interesting than Iris's and Barry's, but it was still nice to cut between these different events and keep those mysteries lingering on. And then we get the answers, you know, five, 10 minutes down the line. And so Barry still has his speed. And it's at this point that Barry reveals what is actually going on because he hasn't told Jefferson about Despero and what is supposed to happen in the future. And so Jefferson, obviously, being someone who's completely sane, unlike Barry right now, is able to see that Barry is probably being manipulated. And they have a fight and Barry uses his powers and he goes a little bit crazy. And then we have this Oliver reference. And I love that they brought this up because it really backs up Jefferson's point that Barry shouldn't give up hope. Because if you look at what Oliver did, Oliver went to the monitor to sacrifice himself for Barry. And Jefferson says, you are the best of us. And this is exactly what Oliver thought of Barry. Oliver never would have quit and Oliver never gave up on Barry. And he went as far to sacrifice himself in order for Barry to live on as Earth's hero. And then you get the, where's the future? Right here. Whose life is it? Mine. So what are you going to do with it? Live by any means necessary. Moment which was just fantastic, as I said earlier. And just as Barry and Jefferson are about to shake hands, Despero phases in and attacks Black Lightning, and also at the same point, Iris shows up with Dion claiming that Barry is innocent. And so Black Lightning holds Despero off using his powers, however, he isn't able to hold him for very long. And at that point, Jefferson says, run Barry, run. And I got major chills at this point because Barry says he has to go to the future and Dion gives him extra steel force, his lightning is green and orange, everything is all going down at once and you know what's going to happen. He's going to go to the future and he's going to find out the truth about what is actually causing Armageddon and who is behind it all. And so then we cut to 2031. Wells is back, but is this actually Wells? Is this Reverse Flash? Well, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but in this place, you get to see Ryan Choi, Alex Danvers, Ryan Wilder, Chester with a funky looking haircut, Iris, who is next to supposedly Wells, and also you have Cecile and everyone else. And so it's like a weird family reunion. Maybe this is the future Justice League rather than, you know, the old Green Arrow and all the other original members, but 10 years down the line, it's completely different. And you have Ryan Choi, Alex Danvers, Ryan Wilder instead of everyone else. And so you're like, what the hell is going on here? And then it's suddenly revealed that Iris is married to Wells, who is 100% Eobard Thorne. Guys, what the hell is going on? This was just continuously blowing my mind every second this scene went on and they all turn around at once and they say what's he doing here as barry walks into the room as their faces are completely shocked by barry showing up now what the hell is going on here well we're going to talk about this obviously in some videos over the next few days because everyone is going to want to talk about this but is barry a villain seems very likely and this version of wells is 100 percent thorn now i have a theory so the timeline has 100% been changed. That was confirmed in this episode. And so is this version of Thorn actually Barry? Now, this is where the theory comes in. I think their bodies have been switched and it was all reverse flash this whole time. So Thorn is Barry and Barry is Thorn. 
and that is why these dark impulses have been taking over Barry in this new timeline, and that is the reasoning for Iris being married to none other than Eobar Thorn, which is just absolutely crazy to see. So, what do you guys think about all of this? This episode was nuts, the ending was completely insane, and I can't wait to see more. I'm so excited for Armageddon Part 4, and I promise you guys my video for Part 4 will be out right away after the episode airs next Tuesday. So, for now, later today, you're going to have a trailer breakdown for Part 4, where we will continue to talk about everything that went down in this episode and theorize about what is to come while also breaking down the new shots in the trailer that they just released. But for now, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel if you do that. Also subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any videos. And you can click right here on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.